we're doing a lot of activities now, and uh, we keep in mind on all of them that what we're trying to do between now and when our center is built is to build partnerships, build capacity, and prototype future programs. So we do things on site with classroom visits. We have um, a general science festival every July, the second Saturday of July, called Neutrino Day, and that um, gets about 600 students. Well, actually, via the web right now. Uh, I would like to expand that to video conferencing. At the moment, it's not video conferencing. Uh, most of the educators don't have access to um, video conferencing equipment in many of the schools in the state, so we haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. Um, we've uh, looking at ways to get data from underground and put it online so that um, students and educators can, uh, can access it and do projects. And we haven't gotten uh, that done yet here on site, but we are working with Fermilab, oops, sorry, um, with Fermilab, and down here in this corner right picture um, are some of my undergraduate students from the summer, and they went to Fermilab for two weeks and built two sets of cosmic ray detectors. And right now, that makes a total of four sets of cosmic ray detectors that are uh, available for high schools in the state. So they move around, and the data from those detectors gets uploaded to a site that's maintained by Fermilab for uh, teacher groups, and it's, it's called um, Cosmic eLab. And uh, students can access that data from not only South Dakota, but all over the country. There's like 3,000 sets of these detectors around the country. They can um, do an experiment using that data. Uh, they could do it as a function of altitude, or they could look at whether there's a difference in cosmic rays here as opposed to the East Coast, and there's all kinds of, of things that come up with um, on their own on what to do with this data. So that's kind of the first step, but we plan this summer to put a set of cosmic ray detectors much larger underground and have that, that data also available online for the students. So um, there is also a project um, called Virtual Dusel, and it's still in the planning stages, but um, that's with our partners at Dakota State University and South Dakota State University. Um, and Dakota State University has a partnership, I think, with um, North Dakota State on one of the things we heard this morning with the gaming group. And they're looking at ways to um, build a virtual environment for DUSEL that could be used as the basis for educational gaming. And um, that's still and in the future and just now in the planning stages. So uh, we have a lot of opportunities for high-definition video conferencing. We have been donated this system I'm using today by LifeSize, um, which has been very nice. And so we've used it to connect classrooms with scientists, both us connecting um, our scientists to classrooms. We've also uh, had local classrooms come in and connect to scientists at Georgia Tech recently um, and then combined it with activities with the students. So, uh, so we've done a lot of facilitating of that kind of thing. Uh, I'd like to see how to advance that from just an occasional one-off uh, demonstration to actually some kind of ongoing um, project. I think that's where the HD video conferencing is going to come in um, to its own in the future. Um, we can also use the video conferencing to see science in action underground, which there's not a lot of yet, but by this summer we should be able to do that um, on occasions. And I am planning for the fall to put together um, a pilot event called Extreme Life where we would travel underground with a scientist looking for microorganisms and then follow them into the genomics lab to see how they analyze the organisms and then maybe have a third person talk about the implications of that for life on other planets. So uh, that's, we're working on the technical details of how to put that together at this point, but we do want to um, 
um, have it available for high school biology classes next fall. Um, so we can connect teacher workshops to a scientist. We can connect students to data, as I talked about. There's all kinds of opportunities, and we're still exploring them. We, I think we've had this unit now for uh, several months, but um, it's, we're really still exploring all the possibilities. So, so the timetable for all this is that uh, we are beginning early science now. Um, we have the mine dried, as I said, below the 4850 level, which is going to be the major campus. Um, there is a two physics experiments moving underground in the next year, um, and that will give us the opportunity to have more broadcasts back and forth to scientists underground. Um, this group called Majorana that's working on neutrinos is building a clean room underground, and um, we expect to start um, doing some programming with them. Um, then Lux moves underground next year. Um, there's been a little bit of a, of a snafu in the funding in that the National Science Foundation has um, a board over it that has to approve the uh, major expenditures. And um, in December, it decided not to approve the next round of funding for the Diesel project because it said it's too large for the, the National Science Foundation is not in the mode of running major facilities and it's the Department of Energy ought to be running this facility. They were already partnering in that the Department of Energy was um, putting in some of the major experiments, but now all of a sudden they're scrambling to um, take over the design and the um, construction of the facility and making sure that all the money is in place for that. So over the last three months, we've had a lot of questions about funding, which still aren't totally answered. Um, we are okay through this year, and the Department of Energy has money for 2012 in the president's budget, um, so we'll see how it goes over the next several months. But um, everybody says the science is well worth it. It's just um, the cost is starting to scare people in the NSF, basically. So, um, so we're still looking at uh, Dussel going. It might not be as grandiose a final product as it um, as the as the plans are right now. But there's three major experiments that they the Department of Energy really wants to see done: two on neutrinos and one on dark matter. And they're planning for those three experiments for sure to happen. So, um, so right now construction. It was planned to start in 2014 on the schedule with the NSF. We don't know if that'll get delayed. And the first caverns would be ready for science in 2018 or 2019. So that was the timetable we were talking about. Uh, so we're still wondering, uh, we're still waiting to figure out if that's going to, to um, stay. Uh, we were planning on the Sanford Center for Science Education to be ready in 2018 at the time the surface campus was finished. So and that's all I have. And um, if you have any questions or if you want to bring a group to visit or anything like that, you can email me at this, web, at this email address. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Peggy, I'm going to take advantage of this, and you, you can uh, yell at me via video if you want. But I think I need to put a, in a plug for what we are trying to schedule coming up in just a month's time. We've been, been working with Dr. Norris to secure um, a K-20 work workshop for educators, research faculty, and students, um, K-12 educators, on site at the Dusa Lab on Friday, April 1st. And we know that the costs are expensive to drive. We know that for K-12 educators to take time off and get substitute teacher fees and all those good things, that that's prohibitive too. We've got some, we've got a smattering of interest, and um, we've kind of, you know, we didn't know what we were getting into or how how broad we should promote it when we started. But based on, you know, just kind of the, the, the challenges involved with making that kind of a, a road trip, we're not flying down, we're driving state fleet. <laughs> um, 
you know, we just, I, I think it's uh, worthwhile to put this out to the rest of all the, you know, everybody attending today, and maybe I'm opening up a can of worms, but certainly if you think you'd have faculty or students at the higher ed level, pre-service teachers, uh, K-12 educators, um, you know, that might be interested, please let me know, and we will do whatever we can. <laughs> and if we get a lot now, of people, then maybe, maybe I'll talk to you again. <laughs> yeah, then that's fine. I think um, at the moment we're planning that the morning would be a workshop on cosmic rays, primarily for the K-12 teachers. Um, and then the afternoon would be a surface tour of the laboratory. But if we had a number of faculty members that wanted to come, I could arrange some discussions with the science group and stuff with the faculty members in the morning while we were doing the workshops, and then we could integrate everybody together. Um, we're planning a talk during lunch uh, from our science liaison to talk about the overall plans to go into a lot more detail than I did on what the science plans are. And um, that would be of interest to everybody, no matter what level. And then um, the surface tour would be of interest to everybody, I think. So. Yes, yes. So Dussel's been very great about working with us on that, along with the South Dakota Thai group, which would be up here to our um, North Dakota Edutech uh, K-12 Education Technology Group. So I just had to throw that in. I couldn't resist. But any That's questions fine. from other sites? 